Hello everyone. So finally, we have reached to the last lecture of this marathon lecture series, lecture number 37, where Joule-Thomson effect, which was started in the previous one, here we are going to discuss what about the inversion temperature. So you have already come to know about its definition, the temperature at which no heating or cooling effect takes place. So we have to start from uh, 1 mole of Van der Waals gas and the equation is P plus A by V square into V minus B equals to RT. So let's multiply these two factors with each other. Then it would result PV plus A by V minus PB minus AB by V squared. So first multiply by V and then multiply by minus B. Okay, equals to RT. And at low pressures, this is very small. So this can be neglected. Okay. And after neglecting, the three terms would be left in the left hand side and in the right hand side you would have RT. And if you rearrange this equation, then you will get the expression of PV, which is equation number 1. And it is equal to RT plus PB minus A by V. On the other hand, V is just divide the right hand side by P. So it is RT by P plus B minus A by PV. Okay. So thus we get equation 1 and equation 2. Now as an approximation, PV may be replaced by RT. In equation number 2. In equation number 2, it had been B equals to RT by P plus B minus A by PV. But instead of PV, we are putting here RT. So this is an approximation. And then let's differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Then it would result del B del T P. And in the right hand side, V is constant. So it would vanish. And this one here, R by P. P both are constants and differentiation of T is 1. So it is simply R by P. And minus a by rt becomes minus minus a by rt square. That means plus a by rt square. Now we get equation number three, and in another approximation, v is replaced by rt by p. Okay, in equation number one. So if v is replaced by rt by p in equation number one, then it becomes instead of a by v, we are writing here a by rt by p that means a into p by rt okay or here rt is taking the left hand side then it would give the relationship pb minus pb plus ap by rt they are changing their signs as they have changed their sides and here p is taken as common then v minus b and ap by rt as usual then p is taken as common from both this and then V minus V plus A by RT. Okay. So this way we are getting uh, two terms which are to be multiplied by V, uh, multiplied by P. Okay. And if this P is taken to the left hand side here and this T is taken to the right hand side, then in the left hand side we shall get R by P and in the right hand side T would divide all this, all of them. So it would become V minus V by T and here A by RT would be replaced by A by RT square. So V minus V by T plus A by RT square. Putting this value of R by P. So what we have got here, we have got the value of R by P. And this value has to be put here in equation number 3. Okay. So what is equation number 3? In equation number 3, these two are the things which are the value of R by P. Plus it, there had been A by RT square. So in equation number three, the it, it, it has the changed form as del V del T P equals to V minus B by T plus A by R T square plus A by R T square. That means twice A by R T square. Okay. And here one by T is taken as common, then we are getting V minus B plus twice A by R T. Now this T is taken to the left hand side as a result. It is T into del V del T P and the right hand side here we are getting V minus B by twice A by R T. Okay. And this V when taken to the left hand side we get a parameter like T into del V del T P minus V. And it has the value twice A by R T minus V. This is equation number 4. This is very important. What about the joule thomson coefficient? It is mu JT equals to minus 1 by Cp del H by del P T. We know that. And it has 
some value. Remember lecture number 34, okay, there we have discussed the thermodynamic equation of state applicable for any substances, where what we have found, we have found that del H del Pt is nothing but equal to V minus T into del V del Tp. So this value is replacing del H del Pt here. Okay, and we are mentioning this, the thermodynamic equation of state, del H del Pt equals to V minus T into del V del Tp. Okay. Now, uh, this negative sign is eliminated in order to just uh, rearrange the sequence. Here, instead of V minus T into this one, would be written as T into this one minus V. And this negative sign will be eliminated. So, we have done this. So, mu JT has the expression. Instead of minus 1 by C, we are writing here now plus 1 by CP. Okay. And here, this order is reversed. So, this one can be replaced by twice A by RT minus P. Where have we got this value? We have got this value in equation number 4. Look back, equation number 4. Here, equation number 4. This one has the value twice A by RT minus P. So, instead of this one, in the reverse order, that means this one, instead of this one, we can easily write twice A by RT minus B. This way, we are getting equation number 5. Okay, and we are mentioning this here, putting the value here equals to this one according to the equation number 4. Now, on the basis of equation number 5, we have to draw some conclusions and then find out the value of inversion temperature. Okay, so from equation number 5, it is clear that the Joule Thomson coefficient is dependent on Cp, A, B, R, and T. So, it is dependent on these five parameters. Since all these parameters except temperature, here Cp is a constant, A, B and R are also constant, so T is not a constant. Therefore, this term mu JT depends only upon temperature. So, this is a, this is an answer of one question that mu JT is a function of temperature only. Here it is depending upon five parameters, but only one variable is there which is temperature. So, it is a function of temperature only. Okay. Then, at lower temperatures, the attractive force between the molecules, that means between the gas molecules particularly, this point is very important. At lower temperature, the attractive force between the molecules overcomes the volume correction factor as twice A by RT is greater than B. Okay, if twice A by RT is greater than B, then mu JT must be positive. And if mu JT is positive, then cooling effect would occur. And at high temperatures, mu JT is definitely negative. Therefore, at high temperature, it is negative. Twice A by RT is less than B in that case. Therefore, heating effect takes place. For hydrogen and helium, A value is, A values are very small. This is Van der Waals constant. And for hydrogen and helium, this Van der Waals constant is very low. That is why twice A by RT is less than B. So that is why heating effect takes place. As it is said that if mu JT is negative then heating, heating effect will be observed. So, for hydrogen and helium always the heating effect, effect is observed since this value twice A by RT is less than B resulting in a negative value of mu JT. Now, at inversion temperature mu JT should be 0. That means there should be no heating or neither any cooling. Okay. And that temperature in that case temperature T becomes Ti. Okay. So, let us put this value twice A by RT minus B equals to 0, but when we can put 0 only when we can replace T by Ti. Ti is the inversion temperature resulting in the value of Ti to be equal to twice A by RB. Okay. So, this way we are getting the value of inversion temperature and thus Ti is dependent only upon a and B. Inversion temperature is a function of A and B. Definitely it is a constant. Why? Because there is no variable in its expression. Okay. So that is all for today's lecture and the conclusion of this series thermodynamics. Okay. It is ultimately it is finished. So thank you for showing patience 
in listening to 37 number of lectures in the series and have a nice day.